Hello and welcome to Exceed Learning. In this video, we're going to talk about Power Query and we want to talk about how you can lower the overall complexity of Power Query once you get familiar with the way it really works. And the way it works, it's not that much different than from the way Excel formulas work. So basically, we're going to try to compare Excel formulas to Power Query and this is going to be extremely helpful for all of you guys that came to Power Query from with or with the knowledge of Excel formulas. So let's get into it. First, what we're going to explain is what does functional programming really means. Let's say that we have a range in a spreadsheet and then we enter a couple of figures. Let's say it like this. And then you want to sum those values. You create a sum function and then you select the range. Once you confirm this, you get an answer. This is 5022. The function is called sum. The function performs the summing of all these values or all the, uh, th this range and returns the value. Do you really need to know how does the sum function operates? So it really it accepts the range as an input and then returns an output. What comes in between, and I do believe that behind the sum function, there is a lot of code. There is some object programming code that needs to start the variable at this position, then iterate through all the remaining positions and then add another, uh, another value to the previous position, etc. It's really, I believe it's around 100 lines of object coding behind this function. But do you really need to know how it operates? No, you just need to know what the function receives as input and what does it returns and as output. And this is functional programming. So it hides the overall complexity of the object programming and allows the natural business user to quickly perform the analysis or transformation of the data. So in Excel, or at least in previous version of Excel and, and until the new dynamic array, of, array formulas arrived, you could only return as a result of a function, a scalar value. And that is the value that has been written in a single cell of an Excel spreadsheet. So as an input, the, the four functions in Excel could accept either a range or an, another cell or a table or a record, but it could only return a single scalar. The Power Query functions operate in the same manner. They accept any of the four mentioned objects, those are tables, uh, scalars, lists, or records, but as an output, they can also return any of those four objects. And that is the key difference between Excel formulas and Power Query. So Power Query is much, or, or the M language, is much more powerful compared to Excel formula. Now we're going to show another way you can compare Excel to Power Query. So let's say that we have this table. This table consists of only a single uh, row. And we're going to try to transform this data using Power Query. So we're going to select this table. We're going to go to data from table range. Uh, so we have this data table inside of Power Query. And now we're going to do necessary transformations. First, we want to merge these columns. So let's go right click merge columns. We're going to merge them by using a comma as a uh, space as a separator. We're going to call this name surname. OK, then we're going to do the proper case. We're going to go transform capitalize each word and then we want to add a, uh, a prefix which is going to be Sir Alex Ferguson. We're going to go to the transform. We're going to do format, add prefix and we're going to add prefix Sir. These are all the transformations. Each of these transformations were, were uh, recorded by the Power Query engine and we can see them in the right part underneath the applied steps. Now we're going to go to the home and we're going to do the close and load feature. And then gonna, we're going to load this data as a table next to the input table. So this is the result. And now we're going to do the same using Excel. So this is the source step. And then 
underneath we have a merge column steps column step and merge column step is going to be uh, this and oh you're going to use concat function concat function and we're going to concat this value with the space and then with this value so merge columns has a step called concat which has an input of the previous step and the output as we can see it inside of a cell then we're going to do a proper case which is going to be a proper function calling the previous step so this step proper case has a function called proper which is accessing the previous step which is the uh, which is the result of the merge column step and then we have another one which is prefix step and this is going to be uh, simply prefix uh, sir with the last with the previous step this is how we do it in excel and it's the same way we do it in power query the only difference is that power query can also return not just the single scalars but power query can also return any other type of object such as table list records and uh, single values and if you go back to the power query editor so if we observe the code for example merge columns this is the function which is called table dot combine columns and then it accepts few of the parameters the parameters can be any of these four objects but nothing more so we limit the complexity of power query m functions from a range of 200 different functions to a range of understanding what the function uh, receives as an input which can be only four different types and understanding what the function returns as an output which can then again also be for any of the of the four types and that way we can understand that each of these steps is actually a, a function or mm code function which has an input and which returns the output as we can see it in the in the preview of the of the middle in the middle preview if we go back to the excel in the excel what is co holding the variables or well, before we explain this we have to explain what the variable is in power query so this whole code you can see it under the advanced editor and in the advanced advanced editor we see this variable which is called source which has some function and then it returns some result then you have another another variable another variable another variable each of these variables have one or more function invokes with the input parameters each of the, these variables hold the transformation or the table as it was at the moment of the transformation or it holds the result of the power query function uh, transformation in power query you have variables in excel you have cells you can draw a correlation between excel cell which holds the result of excel formula with the power query applied step which holds the result of power query m function so if we were to uh, further expand on this we could say that for example if we move this a bit to the, to the right you have this let example and then you have in and then you have this in has to be oops sorry let's do it like this you have this in okay in and then you choose which of these tabs you want to return so if i choose to return prefix then i would say okay this is the exit step of my excel uh, functions or excel script in power query you get that by choosing the exit step after the in so in after the in you can choose whether you want to return the last step which is often being used or you can also return any of the steps that are in between so you can return the previous step or the this one and of course this will change the name sermon to be alex ferguson without the last step which is sir alex ferguson 
Now let's move forward. So let's say that inside of this script in Excel, you, you add another variable. We call, let's call this variable uh, suffix. And we're going to call it coach. Okay, so we want in this last step that we also incorporate and to also incorporate this and coach. So we want this to be an exit step. We can do the same thing in Power Query. So let's go to Power Query. Let's go to the advanced editor and let's add another step. We can add it any in on any position in Power Query. Let's add it here. We're going to call this, we're going to call this step uh, coach. And we're going to say that the variable this step is holding is simply a co coach name or the coach uh, uh, string. We add a comma after we confirm this. And of course, unless you the exit step is the last step of the uh, is the, the last step of the of the script, you will won't get this applied steps uh, uh, pane to the right. So we have to use the last step to be the exit step. If we confirm it, then we have this source step, merge column step, then we have a coach step, which is holding a variable, and then the, the, the script moves on. And then we can use the last step. So this step, we can use it to basically, let's say that we want to change this with adding a, suff a suffix. So we can add, uh, we can add transform and then we can format add suffix. And we're gonna add some value just to get the code. And instead of this code, there is nothing stopping us to say, okay, I want to add a code that is actually an invoke to the coach variable, which is being held inside of my script. And after I do this, the coach variable, this variable is holding the text coach, and I can do added suffix, which is which gonna be the coach. Once you get familiar with this concept of understanding Power Query as simply function invokes with four different types of objects in and out, the whole coding of Power Query becomes much easier, uh, of the whole coding with mcode becomes much easier and then you can do all sorts all, all different kind sorts of mix and matching for example it do, this added suffix doesn't need to be the last step it can be some of the intermediate steps it will still work so this and a suffix will still return the correct result as you can see this is the same thing as if you were inside of an excel file and for example, if you want to uh, insert a new line there and you want to simply copy or cut this value on the top part. So there is no, even though Power Query allows us to see gradual progress of the data, of the transformations, there is, there is nothing stopping you to do all this kind of mix and match. So you can do uh, switching of the, of the, of the, uh, of the of the uh, applied steps, you can do combination of multiple applied steps. You can select which step you want to do as an as an exit of the of the let expression. You can do all those things things that you can do in Excel. The only thing you have to be worried about is not to create a reference or not to create a self reference or not to create a cycling reference, which means that you cannot uh, access the same. Uh, the same step all over again or the loop that never ends if you apply to these rules you can do all different kinds of mix and matches in power query and then you can utilize the full power of the m script so this is all for this video i hope you find it educational and uh, once you understand m in on this level then coding with the, that language becomes fun and interesting and you can do all sorts of different things with, with it. Uh, if you have any questions, please pose them down below in the comment section and looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.